Okay. What's up, guys? We're here with Steve Metcalf, and uh, I've been with I've been working with you for is it about two years now? Yeah, two years. And so for a while before I even met Steve, I was working with his son Zach at uh, my old old job at, at a country club called Westwood Country Club, and then from there, Steve reached out. And I remember always seeing him like hanging out by the treadmills <laughs> on the ellipticals. <laughs> but I always thought to myself, just looking at his physique, I was like, man, this guy is jacked. I wonder what he does. I wonder what he did. So I um, just want to get a bit of your history. Like what were some of the things you were doing like back in the day in your 20s, 30s? What, were, what was your main sport? So I was a gymnast um, from the time I was in kindergarten through my uh, sophomore year in college. Mm. Um, and then kind of switched over into martial arts Ooh, yeah, and, that's right. and weightlifting um, mm. kind of because I injured my knee um, and, and then it's kind of so 20s and 30s. Um, How'd you hurt the knee out? I think people want to hear I that. I was doing a gymnastics move, a um, double twisting double back and landed short on the floor exercise and, and tore my ACL. Oh, dang. Um, and so that kind of ended that experience mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, wanted to find something and that's kind of been a continual deal. I wanted to find something I could devote myself to like I had with gymnastics mm. um, and um, martial arts helped. It was quite a bit like that but um, I think what I found here with you is, is very similar to that feeling when I was younger. Mm, that's very so, cool. And so, like when you so when you hurt your knee, like what was that? I, mean, I bet so much of your identity was was tied up in the gymnastics and being an athlete. So I I want to know, like the moment that happened, like what did it do for you emotionally, like, with your confidence, it physically? Was, it was devastating. Yeah. Mm. Um, because I was, I mean, through early junior high and high school and college, I was in the gym working out um, in gymnastics from two o'clock in the afternoon till seven pretty Dang. much every day. Um, and, um, and then that just ended. Yeah. Um, so I had, and I was a collegiate student and um, I had all this time on my hands that I didn't really know what to do with. And um, I actually struggled because I couldn't, you'd think I'd have all this time, I could get all this stuff done, but I had, mm. I had budgeted my time so much to deal with my training that I, I really struggled for quite a while trying to figure out an outlet of, of that energy and and um, so it took a while it took mm. um, it took years to figure that out. So that was devastating. Then you you went to medical school. Now you're a doctor by trade, and then for a while you were you were still trying to find a movement practice that was best suited for you. So you did martial arts for a while. And then after that, what happened right before you started seeing me? Was that martial arts or was it something else? It was, it was still martial arts. Um, I've been doing that since I was 19. Um, hmm. But I wasn't, I was, I mean, truthfully, one of the things that kept me from coming here earlier was my age. It's like I'm too old. And in, in, in martial arts, it was like I'm getting too old to do taekwondo kicks, so I'm gonna do a lot more work on the ground. Interesting. And then I get injured on the ground, and it takes that much longer to get better yeah. from those kinds of things. And and my martial arts instructor was like, you know, your your back is you know hunched over, uh, yeah. um, and you know it's, it impedes my ability to do some of the things that I wanted to do. And it totally. And it became a. I didn't have a good solution to what it was, and, and then I was getting injured, and it was kind of, mm. it was becoming a little bit of a, so that was, I, I wanted to find something that I could do that would improve my health, make me feel somewhat like I used to feel, mm. um, and and I thought about you with, and watching what you've done with Zach, so. Mm. Cool, so when you first started coming here, it was, I mean, it was interesting for me too. I, I You walked in, you walked in kind of like this, head was forward, and for many reasons, right? Like that probably started happening a long time ago, yeah. and it started building over time. So, in essence, we started to see how much was controlled by this being in this this position. The more we were here, it was hard to move the hips. We were stuck with the hips being in a certain shape, 
Um, so what, were, what was like the first few months like? It was probably like, kind of grueling in some ways, right? It was, you know, some of the lacrosse ball work. Mm. Um, you know, and I consider myself to have a pretty high pain tolerance. <laughs> and it was like, this is, you're, you're going to be uncomfortable. And it's like, this is really uncomfortable. And it was, I didn't really see mm. that it was like, okay, this is going to, you have the ability to see future where you're going to move through. Mm. And I wasn't seeing that at that time. So I was like, I'm going through these things and, I, and, and, I, and I'll keep doing it and have faith in what you're um, mm, doing. But I wasn't, I wasn't all in just from a understanding standpoint. I didn't mm. really understand where you were um, going with that. And then I started seeing improvements in my, my back, improvements in my um, pain levels. And then it's like, okay, now I, I can, um, I think, I think, you know, structurally and physiologically, mm. and I think you think that way. And, mm -hmm. and so it, it um, bouncing things off of you, you've been very good at, um, you know, explaining, you know, why is this happening? And, you know, I'm having plantar fasciitis. What do you think that, and, and you would go through and work through something and, and then it would feel better. And it's like, it's not all here we'll give you a shoe orthotic or here we'll give you a pill, a pill. It's, yeah, you just need to start structurally moving things around, which I hadn't mm. um, really felt before. And that, I mean, it was interesting because I could have hyper-focused on just Steve's pain, 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 but I wanted to take the angle of, of function because I, I, I felt like, and I wanted to get your opinion as a doctor too, I felt like chasing pain too much when it comes to movement at least would make us run around in circles because we just don't know like where it's coming from. Pain is a very like complicated, <laughs> as a, as a complicated topic, and so I was like, if I can at least at minimum increase function, who knows what's possible? Maybe he can start reclaiming some of the movements he thought he lost mm -hmm. when he was younger. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that whole process. Well, and I think, like you said, I think it's emotionally, it's physiologic pain you know, neurologically is, 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 can be um, inhibited. And it's, and I think if you start moving them, you know, you get more movement, even if it's with some pain, you get some emotional benefit, you get some neurologic benefit, mm -hmm. and then it starts working on itself. You know, it starts moving. And I, that's definitely what's happened yeah. with me. It's, it's um, I have different pains, I have things, but they're not, um, they're not, it's not chronic pain. It's it's movement, exercised pain. That mm. You're now okay. Now maybe I did this one a little bit too much, and um, or I'm moving some structures, and so now something hurts a little bit more. But it's there's reasons for what's happening. Mm. So it's almost like a like a trail trail map. Like every, for every time we, we discover something new in Steve's body, like now, what was cool for me, and I want to get your, your thoughts too, is. Every time we discovered something new, I wanted to try a new movement. Everything was tied to an exercise or a cool movement pattern because I wanted you to get excited and stoked about something that you have done somewhat in the past. So we started doing things like skin the cats, flipping around the rings. We started doing things like forward lean push-ups, like dip kind of stuff, planche work. Um, we started playing with some single leg variations, some pistols. Uh, and every time we did it, we, we always got to a point and we we're like, hmm, now we need to work on something else because I'm, I'm seeing that after he gets past parallel or as his arms get past his hips on some sort of ring pattern, now he has some new limitation. So we had to go back to the process again right. and find more function. And then when we came back and returned, what was your experience of like doing that and returning back? Well, and I think because then you, you realize you forget where you started from, but then you, you've moved up and then you go back and you're like, oh, wow, this is much easier than it was mm -hmm. when I had started that. But... I think you you forget part of the journey early on that it's like wow I couldn't even do that at all and and it's one thing you touched on is doing things that I've done before there's this huge dopamine surge or something <laughs> that happens when I'm able to do stuff I did when I was 19 and 20 because it just brings back mm. movement memories that were actually very you know satisfying and I think that's um, it's been very helpful for me that way. It's, uh... like, in your mind, the thing that, the feeling that you felt when you were younger and now you're starting to reclaim a little bit now, I mean, it's hard to categorize, but I, how would you categorize that feeling? What would you say? What was the feeling you're looking for? 
freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's you, I mean, doing something on a horizontal bar, doing something on floor exercise, you, 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 you feel, you know, weightless and freer. Mm. And it's, and having those things where you're not limited by, you know, pain or flexibility or other things. It's, um, so increasing your flexibility and moving back into those areas where your body's supposed to function mm. um, and is designed to function is, is helpful, it makes you feel better. And I'm curious, like, yeah, as you've navigated through new movements here, um, has your definition of strength changed? Like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> It's, it's wise strength, I think, that's the only way I can describe it, is it's not, you're not a mirror muscle, big giant muscle strength, um, beefy guy. It's things that you can, you can lean over and, like you've said, and I just did a couple of days ago, I leaned over and I had to grab something at a really weird angle and I picked it up and I'm like, wow, oh, it didn't hurt at all. Yeah. But it's having flexible strength and the ability to, but it's, it's things that you may have to do that you don't know that mm, you know you're you torque your back and and whereas you would have been hurt you're now it's, it doesn't even affect you at all. It's the same freedom concept, huh? Yeah. That's cool. Thank you, Steve. That's awesome. Yeah. Really appreciate it, and I can't wait to keep trying new things and <laughs> exploring new avenues. And uh, let's see what's possible in 2020. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome.